Thank you, Greg, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed uh, your lunch. Uh, this is the third session of the first day of Advantage New Zealand. Um, John Hill is my name, and I have the pleasure of navigating the next uh, 90 minutes or so. The theme for this session is New Zealand block offer a future of opportunity. It extends very nicely from the first two morning sessions uh, by looking beyond the big picture issues that we have been covering uh, and sharpening the focus towards a few of the more specific pieces of the New Zealand upstream puzzle. The session uh, does present a, a fairly eclectic mix of, um, of representation from above and below ground themes. Uh, we do start with a ministerial address and then move to two technical presentations focusing on below ground uh, frontier issues, then to close a presentation from Bench Taranaki, uh, the regional development agency for still New Zealand's only producing crops, and of course we do hope that will change. Uh, there will be an opportunity for Q&A following the Minister's uh, presentation, and also to all speakers uh, at the end of the session, just to note the Minister must leave uh, for a time following his presentation, uh, but should be back later in the session to join the Q&A session. By way of a couple of opening remarks to frame the session, I, I spend a lot of time with investors. Uh, both of the professional variety, that is fund managers, that is brokers, and also of the corporate variety, so DMP players, generally uh, probably a lot of people in this room, and people beyond this room in the global context. Many of the people I speak to are internationals, they run global businesses, and with interest spanning normally multiple continents. And the feedback from those discussions is usually very clear and consistent. New Zealand is world famous in New Zealand. On the global investor dartboard, New Zealand is further away from the bullseye than near it. The challenge in a global sector is squarely one of breaking through in the fiercely competitive global marketplace for investment capital. That is absolutely not to say that investors are not interested in New Zealand's space, they very, very much are. New Zealand is viewed extremely favourably on a great many above ground measures that are fundamentally important to investors. Very low country risk, low political risk, low economic risk. But also, it would be naive not to recognise that the proliferation of unconventional oil and gas means that an increasing number of equally appealing jurisdictions also present this, with North America being the clearest such example. Competition for capital is not easy to describe, and the easiest way to break through the competition is to present success to a global audience. Ideally, this would be frontier success, and Mozambique is the clearest such example of that. It wasn't talked about two years ago, now everyone's talking about it. Backing out the truck slightly, I think it's very important that the rules of investment and engagement are in place and that everyone is clear as to what those rules are. Uncertainty is the end of investment and capital flow. And where uncertainty is unacceptably high, they tend not to invest. And I think that leads us very nicely uh, to our opening address from the Minister. Without further ado, please do welcome the Minister for Energy and Resources, the Honourable Simon Bridges. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure uh, to be speaking at this very important event for the New Zealand oil and gas industry. As I said in my opening address last night, it's wonderful to see so many people here, particularly our international guests, special welcome to you. Already today, our Prime Minister and other key speakers have spoken much about opportunity. In oil and gas terms, New Zealand truly is a land of opportunity. The demand for and exploration of oil and gas has never been greater. And New Zealand has never been a better place to explore as we've clarified the rules and expectations that apply. We have the world's fourth largest exclusive economic zone with some exciting geology across 18 basins. We are recognised as one of the world's most promising regions, but we remain relatively unexplored. We have a strong regulatory environment that is supportive of responsible exploration and development. The government and local industry are receptive to new players and new investment. So we're ready and willing to talk about how to make the most of this country's potential. As the Prime Minister also said this morning, this government is committed to developing our oil, gas and mineral resources in a sensible, safe and environmentally responsible way. I am confident we can achieve that by adopting new technologies, developing sound policies and good regulation, and as industry, by oper operating to the highest international standards. Shortly, I will announce the areas to be included in the 2013 block offer. 
2013 block offer is our second one as a country since we introduced the block offer strategy in 2011. The government has moved to an annual offering of defined areas for bidding. This ensures the more strategic management of New Zealand's oil and gas resources. For me, block offers demonstrate the government's commitment to delivering better and more transparent policies and processes to ensure we maximise the returns from a well-managed expansion of resource development. It is through this that we are able to attract the most competitive bids and allocate permits to the companies best able to meet our expectations. This is to operate efficiently, safely and in an environmentally responsible manner. The block offer process is putting us as a country on the international stage. We know companies are interested. We awarded 10 strategically important exploration permits in the 2012 block offer. So let's talk about 2013. This year we've introduced a new approach to defining offshore permit areas. The particular methodology has been introduced. It is designed to give maximum flexibility while ensuring robust work programs over defined permit areas. It's now up to companies to define the permit area as they wish, up to a predetermined limit. I see this as an important step forward, bringing New Zealand's approach to offshore acreage releases in line with other key jurisdictions worldwide. It also gives line of sight on areas that may be considered in future block offers. This year, companies will be able to bid to explore one or more areas of up to 250 square kilometres, known as radicules, in the offshore release areas. Permit areas will include adjacent radicules up to a limit of 2,500 square kilometres in the offshore Taranaki Basin release area, and up to a limit of 10,000 square kilometres in the Northland Rianga Basin and the Canterbury Great South Basin release areas. To get to today, the process for the 2013 block offer started in June 2012. That was when we sought nominations from industry on areas of commercial and geological interest to be included in this year's permitting round. Subsequently, the government developed its proposal for Block Offer 2013 and has consulted with iwi and councils on the areas of interest. I'm now pleased to announce the following areas will be available for competitive tender for exploration in Block Offer 2013. The Northland and Rianga Basin's offshore release area. This area totals almost 54,000 square kilometres of prospective acreage off the northwest coast of the North Island. The Rianga Basin is one of the most prospective frontier basins within the territories of New Zealand. The Canterbury and Great South Basin's offshore release area. This area totals 111,000 square kilometres of acreage off the east and southeast coasts of the South Island. We anticipate a lot of commercial of competitive interest in the frontier area of New Zealand, which is already being explored by Shell, Anadarko and OMV. The first deep water wells in New Zealand were drilled in the Great South Basin in the 1970s, proving the presence of an active petroleum system over a large area. The Taranaki Basin offshore release area this totals just over 24,000 square kilometres of acreage in our centrepiece of current production, Taranaki. Over 400 onshore and offshore exploration and production wells have been drilled in Taranaki to date. The basin remains underexplored and there is still considerable potential for future discoveries. Onshore, five defined block blocks will be offered in 2013. Three onshore blocks will be offered in Taranaki. 
These areas will encourage continued exploration in the highly prospective and proven onshore Taranaki Basin. Finally, two onshore blocks will be offered on the east coast of the North Island. These areas are expected to add to the program of exciting development in the region that has been growing in recent times, with consent recently granted to tag oil for exploration activity in the region. Overall, Block Offer 2013 includes around 1,500 square kilometres of onshore and almost 190,000 square kilometres of offshore acreage. And of course there is plenty more information available here at the conference and New Zealand Petroleum and Minerals staff are on hand to answer any questions you may have throughout this conference. Companies interested in exploring in these block offers and these blocks will have until 26 September this year to submit work program based bids. I expect to announce the outcome of block offer 2013 in December. Permits awarded as a result will be governed by the new Crown Minerals Act regime. This new act will come into force on Friday 24 May. And this is also the date that bidding for Block Offer 2013 will formally open. I encourage you to dig deep into the information that's available and talk to the team. And I look forward to hearing about the work programs you will present. I'm also pleased to announce today that the industry nomination process for Block Offer 2014 is open. It is through this process that we are able to identify areas of commercial interest that you want to see included in future block offers. It is important that you get involved and that you nominate. Let me turn now to the new Crown Minerals Act regime. As I've just mentioned, in just over three weeks, the new Crown Minerals Act regime will come into force this new regime is in step with the times and allows for efficient and effective management of the Crown's oil, gas and minerals estate. This legislation will enable investors to have confidence and certainty about the regulatory environment they will be operating in. At the same time, it will give New Zealanders confidence and certainty that regulators have the tools to adequately scrutinise all aspects of exploration and production. Where resources are becoming scarce or there is increasing demand for them, it's a complex decision making process to make appropriate allocations between competing uses and users. We must take account into account environmental limits and scientific and other evidence, Maori rights and interests, and social preferences as well as economic factors. The new legislation gives us I believe, a better framework for doing all this. So what does this mean for you as operators? There will be clear expectations set on permit applicants and holders and increased monitoring and oversight. But that will importantly happen in a way that leaves you clear about the future and that will build a better relationship between you and regulators with more interactive engagement over the life of the permit. Introduction of the new Crown and Minerals Act regime is but one part of the government's commitment to ensuring New Zealand has a world-class regulatory system that ensures the safety of its people and its environment alongside greater resource development, which you've heard from the Prime Minister, is a priority. I appreciate there has been a significant period of change and discussion Many of you have actively engaged with the government in review of the Crown Minerals Act regime, the introduction of environmental legislation into the exclusive economic zone, and on new health and safety regulations for petroleum operations. I thank you for your tireless efforts to help make our laws and regulations world class. We are now at a stage where we can see the benefits of the review processes and we can have confidence that businesses can operate in a stable and world-class regulatory environment. 
I look forward to businesses enjoying greater certainty as we bed in the products of these reviews and as the public develops confidence that the new regime takes into account New Zealand's important values and priorities. Thank you once again for inviting me to speak today. This event is a timely opportunity to discuss and debate the important issues facing our sector. Importantly, it's a timely opportunity to show what promise New Zealand as a country has to offer. And uh, I think as the slide will show, I'm very happy to take a few questions from the floor. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Minister. Uh, for ladies and gents, if you wish to answer, ask some questions, uh, we have two microphones at the rear of the room. I have one here, which I'm very happy to bring around. Uh, if you would like to ask a question, please raise your hand. We'll come to you. If you'd like to stand, state who you are, please, and then uh, ask your question. That would be fabulous. I have many highly paid NZB officials available, they hard and technical. Mike's coming to you now. Thank you, Minister. Um, my name is Chris Bush from New Zealand Energy Corp. Uh, it'd be interesting for us to understand some of the thinking that went into the acreage which has not been included and some of the feedback that you received so that we can understand how the process works. Yeah, I think in most cases we have included uh, the, the, the blocks we heard about from industry. Certainly in the East Coast that's not true. What has happened there is the two blocks have been uh, reduced, uh, but let me be very, very clear, we, we have not included what was originally proposed, we are merely deferring uh, putting those into the block offer. And that's the result of consultation, as I said in the speech, uh, and indeed as we are now statutory, statutorily obliged to do, we consult with Iwi and with uh, councils, and uh, they identified a number of sensitive Waitapu sites in relation to those two East Coast block offers, which we have delayed in terms of, we're going ahead, we've shrunk in size, uh, and uh, we will continue to look into that. But as I say, I think I'd emphasize that those areas are delayed rather than, uh, rather than stopped. Um, I should also say for completeness on that, that there are, we're also a number of submissions arguing uh, you know, not here, not here, that we in the end and on balance decided to go with. And it really was a balancing process between prospectivity on the one hand, undoubted commercial interests that flowed from that, and also wanting to be sensitive to the needs of uh, communities, particularly here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike Hughes, Energy Fantastic. <laughs>